Chaga, and I'm pastor of C6 Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I want to welcome you to 2021. And I also want to welcome you to C6 Church Online. Today, I have a brand new message I want to share with you. But before I do, I'd like you to listen to the following announcements. Thank you. Welcome to C6 Church. Whether you are a regular attendee or this is your first time with us, we want to make sure you know how much we appreciate you joining for worship today at C6 Church Online. We would like to hear from you. Kindly take the time to connect with us by filling out the digital connection card online and letting us know how we can pray for you. You can simply text CONNECT to 605-468-2626 and follow the prompts. Thank you as we look forward to hearing from you and knowing how to pray for you. And we just want to take the moment to thank you for your giving to C6 and by so doing to the Lord. We are collecting a special offering called G5 Growth Special Offering now through February of 2021. G5 simply means giving to five areas. Our goal is to raise $25,000. We have a generous donor who will match each dollar you give up to $10,000. This means that up to $10,000 will be doubled and we will end up with $35,000. Would you give today so that the value of your gift be doubled? Your generous gifts help support these five areas. Outreach to the city, worship and media, C6 Kids, Benevolence, and Wash Clean Ministry. For details, go to c6church.com forward slash g5 dash growth. How can I be a part of G5 growth special offering? One, give online today. Two, give via a text message. Text G5 growth to 605-468-2626 and follow the prompts. Three, give by mail. Simply mail your check to 2601 South Minnesota Avenue, Suite 105, number 360, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. Four, Give from your IRA, trust fund, or any other source. Contact Grace Tidball at grace.tidball at c6church.com. All gifts are tax deductible. To learn more about G5 Growth Special Offering, contact Pastor Zach Ochoga at 605-366-4942 or email at zach.ochoga at c6church.com. Once more, thanks for your generosity. Relax and enjoy this service as I turn it over to Pastor Zach. Once more, welcome back. Welcome to C6 Church Online. I want to share with you some things that the Lord has impressed and laid on my heart. And I trust it will be encouraging to you. Before we do, kindly join me in saying a word of prayer. Father in heaven, here we are. Speak to us. Change us. Make us more like Jesus. And help us follow him and do the things he would have us do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God is a God of strategy. Whenever God wants to do something, he looks for someone. In other words, people are God's strategy. People are God's strategy of getting things done. There are things that only angels do. And angels are his strategy when it comes to those things. But for most things and many things here on earth, people are his strategy. When God wants to deliver a nation, he looks for someone and he calls someone and assigns the person the responsibility, and he works through that person to deliver that nation. When God wanted to come to earth and experience humanity, 
he came as a man. Because people are God's, God's strategy. Sometimes I ask people to help me with some tasks. And the reason I do that is because that's my strategy for getting those tasks done. In the same way, there are tasks and there are things that God invites people to do because they are his strategy. There are times that I invite my kids to help me get certain things done, not because I cannot do them, but because I want them to join me in my activities. Many times, when God asks you to do something, it is because he wants you to join him in his activity. About two years ago, I was painting our house and our oldest daughter was about five and she, she wanted to join me in painting. At first I said no. A five-year-old, she was about five, does not know how to paint. But on a second thought, I felt, you know what? I'll let her paint. She wants to do it. I'll let her paint because I want her to join me in this activity and, and I want to create a memory with her. I want to share and have a memory to share with her. And I also just wanted to enjoy having her join me in my activity. So I kept my desire for perfection aside, gave her a brush, a paintbrush, and she joined me in painting. Yes, I painted all over the places that she painted. But guess what? She, she, she enjoyed the moment and the time with me. She was so proud to let her mom know that she joined me in painting. Many times when God calls you, calls me, calls people, it's not because he can't get it done by himself. It's because he wants to create a memory with you, create a memory with me. He wants you, he wants me to join him in his activity. My friends, God wants to do something great through you this year. God wants to work through you this year. God wants you to join him in his activities. But many of the things that God will call you to will require courage on your part. And as I spent time in prayer regarding 2021, God impressed upon my heart a theme for the year and a memory verse, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9. Joshua 1 and verse 9 says, This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. There are things that God is calling you to. There are things that he would call you to that would require courage on your part because it will look intimidating. It will look tough. But for you to do those things, you must have courage. There are things that would make you feel afraid, but he says, don't be afraid. 
And many times you think that what matters most in your life is whether this person or that person is with you or not. Hear me and hear me well. God wants you to understand that if he is with you, it does not matter who is not with you. If God is with you, it doesn't matter who is not with you. So I want you to hold onto this memory verse. We're going to hold onto this memory verse as a church. We're going to we're going to memorize this verse and we're going to come back to this verse many times this year. There are two very important questions you must answer if life would be meaningful and fulfilling for you. There are not the only important questions, but there are two among important questions that you must answer. The first question is, who am I? It's a question of identity. Many people have an identity crisis in their lives. An identity crisis is a is a crisis of life. It is huge. Many people are confused as to who they are. And many people are trying to be what God did not create them to be because they have a crisis of identity, a confusion of identity. It is a tragedy if a person lives his life or her life confused as to what her true identity is. So the first question you must answer is the question, who am I? The second question you must answer is the question, what can I do? The question, what can I do, is a question of potential. I want us to tweak that question a little bit and even say, what do I do? And this question of what do I do flows from the answer or the question, who am I? If, if this is who am I, then this is what I do because this is who I am. So, this is why today I want to teach on what I title, We Are a Church. We are a church. So, who are we? A question of identity. We are a church. A church is the called out ones by God from the world. A church is the family of God. The church is the body of God. Of Christ we are a church in order for us to go through the year 2021 we must understand our identity in Christ we are a church a dog barks a lion roars an eagle soars. Birds fly. Fish swim. They do these things because of their identity. So if we are a church, what do we do as a church? What do we do as a church? It is important that we know what we do as a church so that we stay true to, I, to our identity for the rest of this year. So I would like you to please turn with me to read a couple passages of Scripture. And the first is Acts 1 verses 4 and 5. 
Acts 1 verses 4 and 5 says, Once when he was eating with them, that is Jesus was eating with them, he commanded them, Jesus commanded them, that is the apostles and the disciples and followers of Christ, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but in just a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then we read Acts 2, 42 through 47. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. So they obeyed Christ's instruction, stayed together, received the Holy Spirit, and all of these things were happening. Verse 43, a deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So we are a church. What do we do as a church? Number one, we are a church that gives its highest allegiance to Christ. We are a church that gives its highest allegiance to Christ. Remember in Acts 1, 40, uh, in Acts 1, 4 and verse 5, that Jesus had commanded them, to stay together, wait in Jerusalem till they received the promise of the Holy Spirit. So the reason they were even together was Christ. Christ was the center, was the hub, was the reason for their being. What does the church do? We place, we give our highest allegiance to Jesus Christ. We have a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and the republic for which it stands. Our allegiance to the flag and the United States of America is good, is great, is awesome. As followers of Christ, we have a higher allegiance than to the flag and the Republic of the United States. As a matter of fact, that allegiance to Christ helps us be better citizens of our country. But we must never misplace our priority. We must never misplace our highest allegiance. And it is to Jesus Christ. The early Christians suffered. The early Christians were persecuted. They were killed. Because their allegiance was to Jesus Christ more than to Rome. And today, as a church, we must make sure our allegiance is first to Christ. And if our allegiance, our highest allegiance is to Christ, it means that his priority becomes our priority. And one of the priorities of Christ is people. 
In Luke 19 and verse 10, Jesus said, I came to seek and to save that which is lost. The reason Christ came was to seek out and save those who were spiritually lost and far from God and far from Christ. That's why he came. In Matthew 28, 19 and 20, he commanded us to go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey all the commands that he has taught. People is to whom he has sent us to. Because people are the priority of Christ. So if our highest allegiance is to Christ, we must share his priority of people. So what do we do? We are a church, number two. We are a church that holds scripture as final authority in our lives. This means that we live by the book. The book meaning the Bible, scripture. This means that we look to the Bible for wisdom. We look to the Bible for answers. We look to the Bible to make decisions and choices that honor Christ. The passage we read in Luke in, in Acts chapter 2 says that the, the disciples devoted themselves to the teachings of the apostles and their teachings were scripture. Their teachings were scripture. And so we are a church that holds scripture as final authority in our lives. If, I, if I'm living my life in a certain way that contradicts scripture and I see, and I see that, then my job is to repent. In other words, change my mind and change my actions. For those of you who are reading the Bible, you've taken on the challenge to read through the entire Bible, I want to say thank you. I want to say good job. I want to encourage you to keep on reading. Because one of the ways that we, we, we show we value scripture is by reading it. And in case you, 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 don't, you stopped somewhere along the way, I want to say good job for how much you've read. And I want to encourage you, keep on reading. Keep on reading. We are, number three, we are a church that values a growing community. We're a church that values a growing community. The Bible makes us understand in the passage that we just read in Acts chapter 2 that they met in one place. They met in the temple. And then they also met in homes, small groups, smaller groups in homes. This is what we call community. They're meeting together. They're being together. And their community was a growing community because the Bible says the Lord added to them daily those that were being saved. The Lord added to their fellowship people who were being saved. So it was a growing community. I am persuaded that it is the will of God for C6 Church to keep growing. So as a church, we value a growing community. And however God would want to use you and however God would want to use me to help his community grow, we want to make ourselves available and say, use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. To reach out to more people that are your priority because people are his priority, use me to reach out to them and grow your community. Number, number four, we are a church that prays. Dogs bark, the church prays. 
Like birds fly because they're birds. The church prays because we are the church. And the devil hates to see the church pray, but we must keep praying. We pray because prayer is a way of interacting with God. Prayer is a way of spending time with God. Prayer is a way of communicating with God. Prayer is a way of inviting God to intervene in our lives and situation. So we must pray. And um, number, number five, we are a church that is generous that's what we do generosity that's what we do and c6 c6 church you are a generous church i can tell you that you are a generous church i mean god keep blessing your generosity we give out 10 percent of our income to support other causes or, or, or other organizations and ministries. That is generosity being practiced right there. As uh, the, corporately. And as individuals, we give to the church. We give, you know, to C6 Church. We are doing it not because of C6 Church, but we're doing it to the Lord and for the Lord. Right now, we are collecting a special offering we call G5, Growth Special Offering. You know, for five areas, we are given to this special offering because of the Lord. Because as a church, we are generous. And, and number six, we are a church that evangelizes. We are a church that evangelizes. In Acts 2, 47, it says the Lord added added to the fellowship daily those who are being saved and you know it sounds like sometimes it sounds like oh they just sat there and then people just kept showing up and showing up and showing up no 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 no. that's not how it happened when they went from house to house they were also they were also sharing their faith with people that they met that had not yet believed in Jesus Christ. When they were at the temple, they interacted with other Jews who had not yet believed in Jesus Christ and they shared their faith. And every day that they shared their faith, God blessed it with the fruit of salvation. So we are a church that evangelizes. That's what we do as a church. And what are some practical ways that you can evangelize? One is by meeting the needs of people. Because when you meet the needs of people, you, you demonstrate the kindness of God to them. And it opens up their heart more to receive the gospel when it comes time to share it. Number two, you pray for the salvation of your friends, pray for the salvation of family members, pray for the salvation of colleagues. That's what you do in evangelism. And number three, you look for ways to have conversations so that you can now share your faith story with them and give them an opportunity to respond to the invitation. And something else that you could do is to even invite people to church because it exposes them to the gospel. So as a church, we are a church that evangelizes. I want to bring this to a close here quickly. The only place, my friends, that you can find true meaning and fulfillment in life is in pursuing the purposes of God for your life. And God might be laying on your heart something to do. God might have put an idea in your heart to do something. And in the course of listening to me share and teach, you know, he, 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 there might be ideas that God is putting in your heart. I want to encourage you as your pastor. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you not to let your imperfections hold you back. 
Don't let your imperfections hold you back. I want to encourage you not to wait to solve all problems before you take the next steps. I want to encourage you not to wait for perfect conditions before you pursue the idea that God has put in your heart. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 4, it says, Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. I can tell you, my in-laws are farmers. I can tell you, they don't wait for perfect weather before they farm. In fact, the Living Bible says, Anyone who waits for perfect conditions, if you wait for perfect conditions, you will not get anything done. And finally, I want to encourage you not to even let your lack of biblical knowledge hold you back. You know that you lack some biblical knowledge, so all all you need to do is to pursue that knowledge. But don't let the lack of that knowledge hold you back. So here's what I would encourage you to do regarding the ideas that God is placing in your heart. Take the first step of faith. And the next step of faith toward the idea God has put in your heart. Don't wait for perfect conditions. Take the first step of faith and the next step of faith toward the idea that God has put in your heart. Our mission is to make disciples of all nations. Disciples are people who are ardent students and followers of Jesus Christ. Who also are about the business of helping other people get to know Jesus Christ. So can I encourage you to say a prayer? Uh, Can I encourage you to pray and say, Lord, who are the two people you want me to build a discipleship relationship with this year? Show me. Who are the two people? We're talking when when we say a discipleship relationship, we're simply saying an intentional relationship, helping people in their journey of faith. There are two people at least that God could show you to say, I want you to intentionally build relationships with these people and help them in their journey of faith. Who are those two people, Lord? Bring them to church. Expose them to the gospel. And you keep working with them. I promise you, you would be placing, you would be be making a priority of Christ your priority. So I want to encourage you to be the church this year. Before I pray and close this service, for those of you who, are, who want to worship the Lord with your tithes and offerings, um, we have options to give. You can go online to give, or you can just text you know, the word give to 605-468-2626. And for those of you who want to give to our G5 growth offering, all you need to do is to text G5 to 605 468 Two six two six. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you this year. May the Lord cause you to make his priority your priority. May the Lord cause you to make your life count this year in time and for eternity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of this service and have a great week.